Hey, guys. Super cool. Have a seat. I'm just chilling up here like a villain. Because that's who I Rosie, am. Rosie, what are you doing? What do you mean? I'm just chilling. You need to clean your room. It's a pigsty. Well, that's just how I live my life. Look, open dorms is from 6 to 9 tonight in Sperling. You need to get this cleaned up oh, now. Crap. Welcome back, Central. <laughs> How's everybody doing? You just sound so excited to be here. Let's try that again. How's everybody doing? Oh, good. I'm so glad to hear it. Would you stand up with me and uh, let's gather together as a community and begin our worship together, okay? <clears throat> Father God, thank you so much for your grace and your mercy. Thank you, Father, for bringing us back to this place. Thank you for the safety that you've afforded us. And, and uh, Father, I pray your blessing on our time as we gather together and pray that you are blessed by our praise and worship. In Christ's name, amen.
surrounding me, let it break at your name. Still, call the sea to still, the rage in me to still every way at your name. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, your silence fear. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. Breathe, call these bones to live. Call these lungs to sing once again. dies down Lord speak to me now you have all my attention I will linger and listen I can't miss a thing Lord I know my heart 
fears into the wind I'm just before a touch of heaven oh Guys, pray with me. Dear God, thank you so much for bringing us all here together to sing, and I just pray that it's so much more than songs. I just pray that it's worship, and it's all for you, and just thank you for the blessing, because it's so fun to worship, and that you receive all the glory. Thank you so much, and I pray that our hearts are open for this message. In your wonderful name, amen. I'm always amazed at how enjoyable it is to get to worship together and see people use their talents in front of us and hear one another sing. It's wonderful to do that. We get to do that every, every week. It's also great for us to hear a, a sermon uh, every, every chapel that uh, someone takes God's word and opens it to us in ways maybe that, that we haven't heard before. But there's something that I think has been missing for a while, and I've been looking at that and wondering what I could do to, to help solve that problem. And uh, what I think has been missing uh, from our chapels is a chance to hear from those who have learned through their service what it's like uh, in order for them to uh, come more uh, in, in a better understanding of God's Word through their acts of service, not in chapel and not in the classroom, but uh, out in, in, other, in other tasks. Uh, we have our mission of developing servant leaders for the church, and we realize that a lot of the things that are learned to become servant leaders uh, don't really happen on a stage, and they don't really happen in a classroom. They end up happening in a way that uh, is, is way different. And uh, who better to tell us about that than some of our seniors? So this year, I decided to... Um, take a different approach to my SALT 375 personal assessment class and, and have each of the students write up an, an experience that they had while they were serving the Lord in some way, not in a classroom, not in chapel, but something that they were doing outside of the norm that we typically think of as the learning experience. And they shared them with the class. Each person wrote one up, they wrote a manuscript up, and then they stood up and they delivered this uh, servant leader lesson to the entire class. It was really interesting to hear the, the wide variety of experiences that our students had in this way. And um, I asked them uh, to evaluate each other and, and choose some that they think would be uh, important for the entire student body to hear. So that's what we're going to be doing for the next four chapel services. We're going to hear hopefully from 12 different students who are finishing up their time here at Central this year to tell us about their servant leader lesson that they, uh, that they grasped in some way that they were serving the Lord uh, during their time here. And we're starting off today with uh, three students that uh, I think you, you probably know, but maybe you've never heard them tell these stories. And, and as they describe the story and what they got from it, I hope that you'll be able to, to visualize yourself in some way. Maybe something that you yourself have done. Maybe something that, uh, that you may still plan to do in your time here. Uh, our goal is that these stories will be not only helping us uh, realize just how uh, wide the experience of being a servant leader can range, but it will inspire you to think about doing some of those things in, in the future uh, whenever you have the opportunity. So I'm going to call three people up, and uh, we're going to hear from them today, and the other nine I'll, I'll save uh, to tell you about later. The first person, uh, these three people to come up, the first one is uh, Rachel uh, Busson uh, of Minerva, Ohio, a youth and family ma major. Uh, Mallory Zarcone from Farmington, Missouri, a uh, Christian counseling major. And Jason Merriman from Waterloo, Illinois, a Christian ministries major. Let's uh, give them a hand as they come to the stage. Over there. We're We've not practiced this, okay? We're, we're trying to figure out what we're doing as we go along. 
So uh, what's going to happen is I'm going to introduce each of these, give them a chance to speak to you when they're uh, done. Uh, you know, you, you want to be sure and encourage them with your response because uh, this takes a lot, of, uh, a lot of guts for them to go first and do this, okay? This, is, this has not been done before. And then if we have some time left at the end, I'm going to ask them some individual questions maybe and, and see what we, can, uh, what, what we can explore further. So uh, I think it was agreed that Rachel would go first. So would you join me in welcoming Rachel Busson? And she's going to go next. never done this before. Um, okay, so I'm going to tell you guys a story. Um, so I'll, I'm a senior, I've been here for four years, um, and for the entire four years I've been volunteering with the high school ministry out at Timberlake Christian Church. Um, for those of you who don't know where that is, um, it's literally just over there. <laughs> it's the street over. So like I said, I've been there for four years, um, and these kids um, are just really amazing. They have a genuine love for God, and they truly want to serve him, and getting to see that and witness that has been so beautiful and also humbling during my time here at Central. Um, so the story that I wanted to tell you about is um, about one of those days. So um, the timeline is um, pretty recent, actually. It was just last semester. It was a Wednesday night youth group, and Timberlake does this thing where every week that we meet, we meet in a different room, um, but the third week of the month is what we call gym night, and gym night is not particularly my favorite. <laughs> if you know me, you know I'm not sporty at all, um, and gym night consists of usually a lot of dodgeball and a lot of aggression from the really competitive kids, so not really my scene, and uh, it's usually really hard for me to kind of get up the motivation to go and have a good attitude. So this week in particular, I, I go and I'm in a really, really bad mood actually because I was really stressed out with school. I was working two jobs at the time. I was trying to last minute throw together a wedding and, you know, wasn't getting enough sleep and, you know, all the things that college students do to survive. And uh, so I go and I'm already in a bad mood and it's really hard for those of you who do youth ministry, you know this. Um, it's really hard to build relationships with the kids when you really don't want to be there. You know what I mean? So um, that's kind of the, pl the place where I was in. And so about an hour, we, the, what they do is they play games for about an hour. So it's like dodgeball for an hour, basically. And then they break and they have a snack time and a Devo. And what I'll usually do is I'll leave the games a little bit early because, let's be honest, I'm not really participating anyway. And I go start setting up the snacks. <coughs> and so this week, whoever provided the snacks thought, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring root beer floats. So I'm back there, and I'm like elbow deep in vanilla ice cream. And I'm sticky, and I'm in an even worse mood because I don't, want to be here and I'm sticky and I could have been in the dorms actually doing homework doing something that mattered right and so I'm so frustrated and the kids start lining up and they're coming through and these like I, I cannot emphasize enough how amazing these kids are so they're like thanking me like oh my gosh Rachel thank you so much and I'm like yeah yeah whatever <laughs> and this one kid comes through and he looks me in the face and he goes Rachel, thank you for serving us. We really appreciate it. And it was like, huh, huh. I felt like I got slapped in the face because it was like in that moment, I was humbled and I realized how bad of an attitude I had. And it, it kind of changed the way I viewed the whole rest of the semester and kind of youth ministry as a whole. Um, it reminded me what it means to be a servant leader, which is, you kind of die to yourself, you know, and you, you live to be like Christ. You serve others. You think about the needs of others and not my needs. Like, oh, I could have been at the dorm doing homework. Like, you're present in the moment with the people that you're with. And so it just humbled me in such a real way. And it reminded me of this verse in Colossians 
that says, let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you can know how to answer everybody. And it's been reminding me throughout the rest of last semester and throughout the summer, because I did my internship with Timberlake, for those of you who don't know, um, that you need to be thinking about the way that your actions and your words are used to convey value to other people because you never actually know the battle that another person is struggling with. And in that case, it was me. <laughs> and uh, so my encouragement to the underclassmen and to those of you who I know are probably maybe feeling burned out in the ministry where you're serving or you're feeling like your work isn't valuable, um, it's this, and this is what I've learned, is that um, <clears throat> your ministry has nothing to do with you and it has everything to do with Christ. So allow your actions and your words to be used to glorify Christ no matter what you're doing. Um, and uh, remember to be humble because um, God can use somebody that's humble much easier than he can uh, somebody who thinks that they deserve all the recognition. So remember who you're serving. All right, we'll, we'll come back to Rachel in a little bit with a question or two maybe, but uh, now we're ready for Jason Merriman, and won't you make him feel welcome? I don't know what you said, but... Um, so as he mentioned earlier, he wanted us to give a little bit of background information, just kind of real brief. I am from Waterloo, Illinois, just a little part of southern Illinois outside of St. Louis. I first heard about Central from a person named Jess Petker. I, for you who are seniors, you'll remember her because she was here when you guys were here, but... Um, for those of you who don't, uh, she's part of a family that I moved in with back home so that I could finish high school because um, it wasn't until senior year that I became a Christian. And so when I came to Central, you could say it was kind of spontaneous. I had checked out St. Louis Christian College, didn't know if that's really why I wanted to go. I got accepted to Colorado Christian University, but it was like $60,000 a year, and that was way too much. Um, and then I also got accepted to like Cornerstone University, but that was spontaneous as well. I just applied, didn't think I was going to get accepted. So I came here because I knew some of the people from Central already, and I knew that they were really growing in their knowledge of Christ, that they were really growing as servants. So I wanted to do that, and I wanted to become um, better equipped with the word, and I wanted to learn what it looked like to just do ministry in general, like just be better equipped. And so my story is kind of, it's, it's not planned, like it's not a reoccurring servant lesson, like it wasn't like a youth group night. It was actually something spontaneous, which of course fits with my personality, but it was during sophomore year when Kyle was an RA at Second Lang, and uh, <laughs> I don't know why it's so funny, but okay. Um, so that year, we had a new student come in. His name was Cameron Traha. For those of you who don't know, uh, he, he was a cool guy, man. I, I really loved Cameron, and he was from good old Louisiana. And just before the semester started, Louisiana got hit really bad with the storm. I mean, like hundreds of houses got flooded out. And so when he came on campus, I mean, granted, he wasn't like the best organizer necessary, best administrator, but he had a need. He wanted to go down to Louisiana and serve in his hometown of Crowley because that was some of the areas that got hit. He knew of a guy whose ministry was to deliver these sheds that people would build on site to store their possessions in while like their house was repaired or they found somewhere else to go. So Cameron comes up, and I think it was probably within a week, he convinced about nine of us to drive 14 hours down to Louisiana on a Friday day, leave at 4 o'clock in the morning, serve Saturday, hang out Saturday or Sunday, and then drive back Monday. And so, granted my personality, of course I was down for the adventure. Um, I was, of course, down for this 30-hour drive where I was pretty much going to completely throw my weekend out of the question. There was definitely going to be no homework getting done, but that's okay because we're about to embark on a wild adventure to Louisiana. So we go... And we, we left at 4 in the morning, drove down there. Uh, we started serving Saturday, and it was, it was a blast. Like, honestly, um, we got to have all sorts of fun in a 14-hour car ride. Uh, you got to build some sheds. Well, we kind of delivered them, but it was in the rain. So we're, like, just getting rained and drenched in this area of Louisiana as we're trying to serve and meet this need. And then we hung out Sunday with his family and his church. And so we got to meet 
like all these people that Cameron knew, his, not only his family, obviously, but like even his church family, like these people who invested in, in Cameron. So that was a really cool experience. And we, got to, we also got to have some Louisiana style gumbo, which fantastic. Um, and then we, we drove back Monday. You know, and overall, the, the trip wasn't really that well planned, but so much came out of it. I mean, I'm, I'm sure I could probably drive a whole bunch of different servant leader lessons out of that. And so you're probably wondering, well, which one is it? I mean, this is a really, you know, cool adventure. It's a cool trip. What was the lesson? Was it trash your weekend so that you can serve God? I mean, that'll preach, but that's not what the lesson was. Was it be willing to serve and no matter the weather conditions, even if it's pouring rain on you? I mean, could. That's reasonable, but it wasn't the lesson God was teaching me. Well, what was it? See, for me, the lesson that God was teaching me was when you see a need in the body, just say yes. Like, don't think too hard about it. Don't sit there and try and weigh all the pros and cons and say, well, I don't know, like, I, I could be doing this or I could be doing that. You know, and don't sit there and try and think of yourself, well, I'll pray about it. God wants you to serve his body. You see, because when there's a need, we as Christians, like, we just can't help but serve. And that should always be our response. So that even if it means I'm going to trash my weekend, even if it means I'm going to go serve and get poured rain on me, like, I'm going to do it because I want to help my brother. You see, the service isn't about you. It's not about me. It's about the person whom you're serving. And in that weekend, I decided that I was going to care more for Cameron than I was about myself. That's exactly what the body needs. And so anytime you see somebody who has a need, who needs help, just say yeah. And so the verse that comes to mind is in 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 9 through 11. Here's what it says. It says, Show hospitality to one another without grumbling. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Jason. So I mentioned that when we did these, I had the students write them out in advance because I wanted to make sure they were going to actually, uh, you know, say something that would be, uh, let, let's just say, helpful to the whole class and, and not uh, distracting or anything. And, and I got this stack of papers to read, and the very first one I read was uh, Mallory Zarcones. And I think I wrote at the bottom of it, please teach everybody else how to do this. Because what she had put in there was exactly what I hoped uh, I, we would see from these types of lessons. So I'm excited that Mallory is to share with you. Would you welcome Mallory Zarcone? Hey, guys. So as Dr. Fincher said earlier, I'm from Farmington, Missouri, um, not too far from Overly, Missouri, and uh, that was definitely a big plus for me, choosing to come to Central. Um, when I was looking at coming to Central, I had just finished an associate's degree at a college near my home and hadn't left home before, wasn't really totally sure what that was going to look like or wasn't totally sure if I was ready, and um, I just kind of stumbled upon Central. It was definitely a God thing that I found it. And um, when I decided that I wanted to be here, I felt like God was leading me to uh, go into Christian counseling as a degree. And um, I had been a little bit opposed to it beforehand. I was like, God, I can't be a counselor. That's not what I can do. So, But I I'd followed him anyways, and I haven't looked back since. It's been incredible. But um, I say all of that to say that there's been a lot of times in my life where God has changed my plans. And kind of getting used to it at this point, but it's fine. So, <laughs> guys, don't be afraid to let God wreck your plans. Uh, all my life, all I really wanted was like a little white, white picket fence house, you know, nice little family, nice little job, nice little home in America, comfortable, just enough, you know? Uh, I knew I could move mountains with my faith and do incredible things through Jesus. I had enough faith to know that those things were possible, but I didn't really see a need for those things in my world, and so I just didn't really think that it was necessary for me to do those things in my life. But 
like I said, I'm used to God changing those plans, and I'm used to God altering my dreams. So, you know, like I said, he's changed the college that I was planning to go to, my degree, and my future home. So last spring, I decided to go to uh, Germany on an outreach week trip. Um, it was led by a close friend of mine, and I've always loved European culture, and I've never been on a missions trip, so it just made sense. I was like, yeah, this is what I need to do. This is the first one I'm going to go on. I'm going to learn about missions and see what all this is about. Um, I always loved the idea of missions and thought that it was absolutely crucial to the body of Christ and the kingdom of God, and I valued it, but, you know, I, missions was for the people that were called to missions, which wasn't me. Um, <laughs> so... When I was in church camp in, like, high school and stuff, we would talk a lot about missions. And they would ask us if, you know, they would talk to us about goers and senders and what that looks like and what that call might look like on our lives. And I always felt very confident in the fact that God had created me to be a sender and not a goer. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I can do this. I will be a sender. Got it, God. Thank you. And <laughs> so off to Germany I went with no thought of God actually changing those plans or changing my heart in regards to those things. Silly me. <laughs> so I went, and then I fell in love with everything. Um, the culture in Europe was so different from what I was used to in America. In America, it's kind of go, go, go. We have a goal, and we reach it, and we just go. And I'm not saying that Europe isn't like that at all, because there's certainly you know, bits of that in the culture, but the culture is very much just like being, and they're intentional with a lot of the things that they put in their lives, and they put around them, and even the things that they put in their body, and so on and so forth, and it was just beautiful, the buildings were beautiful, the food was beautiful, the coffee was amazing, so that didn't hurt, and <laughs> they had so much around them, like so much, but it was clear that they were spiritually deprived, um, in much of Europe, a lot of the people are non-religious, atheist, or Muslim. Um, there's a very small percentage of people that are evangelical Christians. And that made me very sad because I had felt like I was at home in this culture. I'd felt like I'd fallen in love with the culture. And to know that they didn't know the amazing power of Jesus and the passion and great love that God has for us just like broke my heart so I came back and I started to think about at church camp with all those people and all the people that stood up to say that they were they wanted to be goers that they felt that call in their lives and I started to think back um, to a lot of the people that I knew personally that stood up and I thought about where they were now and a lot of them weren't pursuing that call anymore and I, I don't know if that call changed on their lives. I don't know what happened. But I started to realize that Matthew 9.37, which says, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few, was much more true than I'd cared to realize before. The workers are so few, and there's a lot of work to be done. Um, and I realized that I had nothing to lose but my own comfort and my own plans. That was it. Those were the only things I really had to sacrifice at the end of the day. Now, I'm not saying all this to say that, you know, everyone is called to go and do the exact opposite of what they have always wanted and do things that make them super uncomfortable and that they really don't want to do. But maybe, maybe we are. I don't know. If God has called you to go, just go. Don't hesitate. Be obedient. And don't be afraid to let God change your plans and make them into something even more beautiful than you could ever imagine. Thank you, guys. Three great lessons. And uh, the next phase of this, I'm just going to ask a quick follow-up question to each of these guys. They don't know what it is, but I, I don't think it will be too hard for them. And then finally, I'll let them reflect on the other two that they heard today. Uh, it struck me as I thought of these three lessons that um, one person was talking about a story that was, that was pretty routine. It, it was something that was just kind of mundane. And Rachel, I guess what you were doing was something that was normal for you. And when you hear Jason talk about something that was really spontaneous, 
how does that strike you in your experience? Like, was your experience more spontaneous, normal, or are you more of a routine person? How does that affect your leadership? Oh, I'm very routine. <laughs> um, I need structure. I'm, you know, like a homebody. That kind of thing is just kind of where I thrive. Um, and what was the, what was the last How would you bring lesson? spontaneity into that? How would you see spontaneity being something that would make your, uh, you know, make your routine a little bit more open? Um, I think having more spontaneity in my routine would definitely help me to recognize um, things that are going on outside of my little bubble. It would help me maybe see the needs of others better, give me more clarity, more um, perspective. Um, and it's not a bad thing. It's just maybe not something that I seek out as often as I should. Yeah, it strikes me that that story, I mean, I get into that mode too. I know I've got to be here this long, and when I'm done, I can go to my next thing. That's mm -hmm. the routine. Yeah. The spontaneous is if that kid comes over afterwards and said, hey, can I talk to you for a little bit? And I mean, that's happened to me. Um, I try to be really, really open with the kids in the youth group, and I try to encourage them, hey, if you ever need me, you know where I am. And I've had kids, um, even just recently, like something tragic happens to them, and they just say, hey, can I come over? And it's like, yeah, you can come chill at my house, and we'll talk about it, and I'll make you chicken noodle soup, you know? <laughs> so just something that, that's kind of out of the ordinary. Um, those, those things aren't very often, but they do happen. So. All right, great. Well, Jason, you talked about being a very spontaneous person. And uh, when you listen to um, uh, Mallory's about, uh, you know, a mission trip, that's something that's highly planned. It's highly structured. I mean, you've got to make flights. You've got to make sure that you're in the right place at the right time. How do you think um, spontaneity and structure for you and planning on that trip, was there any way that you learned, I wish this could have been a little more structured or a little bit better planned that would have made it an even, even better experience? Yeah, and I think a big thing about the trip itself was the spontaneity of it, at least on my part, was just getting down there because Cameron had some of the details kind of worked out when it came to who we were going to be working with because it was more like we just show up and then he's going to tell us what to do. And so there was at least some structure, I think, to that. But the, I think the spontaneity for me was, am I willing to go? Like, I know that I could have all these things to do this weekend, but am I willing to, you know, put that aside and just go on this kind of adventure? Yeah, and, and both of those are necessary. I mean, it's really great to know that somebody's got a structure. But, yeah, sometimes that decision is really more spontaneous. I am or I am not going. That, that's yeah. good insight. Mallory, I want to ask you a little bit now. You're on a, a mission trip here that's very, uh, uh, you know, it's very planned. And yet, uh, if you were to go back to the mission field, you have to settle into a routine. Mm -hmm. So think through how the lesson changes once you've got a plan on day after day or month after month <laughs> being in a place and, and the romance of it sort of wears off. Yeah, um, that's actually something that I've been working through a lot recently, just like dealing with this change of like desire because I'm a very routine person. I like structure. I like to have things laid out the way that I like them. And um, and that's actually been something that, it's been kind of a relief to know that, to know that like missions work isn't all just like spontaneous and crazy things happening. Um, it was kind of a like a comfort that like God kind of showed me that like, hey, like this isn't going to be something ridiculously out of your comfort zone or like something that you can't do. like. Um, you know, he, it's like he's kind of worked me into that plan in, like, a weird way and, like, that I'm out of my comfort zone. I'm doing something different. But, like, there's still the structure and, um, you know, the neatness of it all, which I'm so okay with. <laughs> so <laughs> that's kind of a comfort for me. All right, very good. Back to Rachel for a second. So now I want you to reflect on a couple of things that the other people said in their lesson. So I really liked your lesson about, uh, about being humble and knowing that it's about others. It's not about yourself. Um, what about that concept of having your plans wrecked? Like, you know, being a youth minister, how, a youth ministry major, how has God, how could you have given that lesson yourself? Can you think of anything from well. your youth <laughs> ministry where, where your plans were just completely wrecked? Like oh, yeah, that? totally. <laughs> um, so God did wreck my plans. Um, I came to Central with the full intention of being a missions major. 
Um, and I pursued that for actually a couple of years. Sorry, Curtis. <laughs> um, <laughs> he gives me a hard time about this. <laughs> um, but uh, that kind of that really did happen, um, where God really laid on my heart that He wanted me to change directions. So I switched majors. I became a youth ministry major, and youth ministry is kind of its own ball of crazy, um, and it just has its own unpredictableness. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, it. Having to learn how to interact with people um, younger than myself who are dealing with things maybe that are a little bit more intense than what I've personally dealt with has been um, such such a growth, such a learning, such a, a God thing um, because you have to learn empathy. You have to learn compassion. Um, and sometimes I don't feel it, you know, sometimes, um, maybe a particular student really just grates on my nerves. It doesn't matter because, um, that person is valuable in the sight of God and, uh, just having to learn how to be kind of like that, that thing of be humble and say, what do you need? What can I do for you? Um, has been really probably one of the biggest change of heart things that I've had to Excellent. to deal with. All right, Jason, um, you're up on the stage a lot. You're in front of people. Obviously, you, you're not afraid to to be uh, you know to, to talk and to be to be seen as a leader. Um, Rachel talked about humility, and I, I guess I'd like to hear you describe because I know a little bit of your story, and you may want to share some of it. How mm -hmm. your servant leadership is changing to become way more humble, less with a microphone, less on a stage. Talk about that a little bit and, and how that feels to you at this point. Yeah, so, I'll, and I'll try and give quick, quick background testimony. So, if you would have known me in high school, I mean, aside from just being a heathen, um, I was kind of surprised. I was really, really introverted. When I took Oralcom back in high school, in fact, the lack of oral comm, because I skipped the class all the time, I absolutely hated public speaking. Like, I couldn't stand it. And it wasn't until I became a Christian when I was, like, playing guitar. I was playing my youth pastor's guitar up on stage after youth group one day. And me and my brother come from, like, a metal background, right? So we're just kind of doing these little riffs and solos or whatever. Not really. I, okay, anyways. Um, <laughs> but, but so my youth pastor saw that, and he was like, hey, dude, like, you should play on the worship team sometime. I'm like... I don't know about that, but I guess I'll give it a try. So long, long story short, that's kind of how I got into doing worship to begin with. Started on the stage, and then eventually I got more opportunities to speak. And what I began to find out was my insecurities, my belief that I was too introverted to speak in front of people, or my lack of talent or lack of ability, that when you just rely on God's power, those things are no longer excuses. And I just found that God was putting me into these places where, like, what I was doing, it wasn't for me, it was actually building up the body. And I think that was a big thing for me. That's, if there's anything that's taught me more things about humility when it comes to speaking, playing guitar, is the fact that every time I do it, it's to do it for other people. Like, it's never for me. It's fun to play guitar, it's fun to play on the worship team, and it's fun to get to speak. But if I don't see any tangible result coming from the body of Christ, then I'm doing something wrong. And so I think if there's been anything that's taught me more about humility, it's just seeing that people are actually growing from what I'm doing. That means that I'm being obedient in what I'm supposed to be doing no matter what. So, All right. And one last question for, uh, for Mallory here. So, so you go on this mission trip. You find yourself one of these days on the mission field. And then you're in this situation like Jason describes where an opportunity happens, like spur of the moment, spontaneous. Mm -hmm. There's a person to talk to. Here's a place to go. Here's something that needs to be done. Talk to us about the balance between routine and spontaneity mm -hmm. as you see yourself serving in that kind of a field. Yeah, um, that's something that's been a big lesson for me. Like the last two years especially, um, being an RA and also being on camp teams over the summer, those two things are very much in those jobs. Um, having kind of a routine of things that you need to do for yourself, like 
quiet time with God and um, even things like room checks. Like those are routine things. Those are really important. You need to have those things and self-care and those things are very important. Um, but also having the flexibility in your life to where you're able to help your brothers and sisters and um, not only like you're able to, like you have the time, but like your heart is in the right place to where you can say, I can help you. And I'm, you know, being a quality person to speak into your life because something that I found that has made the biggest impact is, um, honestly, this is going to sound really cliche, I know, but like the bit, the best routine to have is just like having that time with God and having that time to focus on him and him prepare your heart and fill your heart. Because if you don't have that, it's going to be really hard for you to lay down your will for another person. It's just going to be doubly as hard as it would be, even if you were stubborn like me and like it just doesn't matter but like if God's working on your heart every day it's so easy to have those moments of spontaneity and be like hey friend I'm gonna help you and also just be obedient to whatever you feel like God's leading you to so I don't know I don't know if that answers it but that's great all right let's once again let's give our appreciation to these three for their willingness to do this And uh, we're going to have a word of prayer, uh, not only for them, but for you, because this issue of being able to see the lessons around you, for God to open your eyes and teach you as you're serving Him, is something that uh, you don't wait till your senior year to discover. It's something that's happening all the time. It could, could happen after chapel today. And when we ask God to show us those uh, lessons, we'll be able to see them, act upon them, and make a difference in others' lives. So let's pray. God, I thank you today that uh, we've been able to reflect on how you worked in just some, some situations that are all the way from uh, normal to crazy to life-changing. And uh, in each of those situations, God, you, you show up if we're, if we're looking. And I pray that today each of uh, these three can, can have more confidence and knowledge of your will for their life through those uh, plans that they have made and your work within those plans. Uh, use those experiences that they have had uh, to serve you and to serve others in years to come. And for all of us, God, I pray that we will notice when we're in the midst of opportunities that, that you're calling us to, that we should just say yes and, and go and, and figure it out later trust that you're there, that you're going to use it in some way that, uh, that we can't imagine. And sometimes that we need to just uh, keep on keeping on, and even if no one notices, but when they do notice, to realize that, that you've been noticing all along. And Father, like Mallory, I pray that we can also learn that uh, whatever plans we have for ourselves, as good as they are, may be something you're interested in changing at any moment. So keep us open and humble, willing to learn and to follow whatever you may lead. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, on Friday we'll hear from some more students and I look forward to seeing you back here then. Thanks for helping us with the chairs.